Okay, so you're looking to create a an elevation grid or an elevation map for Bukemba. So we do have the elevation data for the whole of Burundi, and that you guys should have somewhere on your on your GIS um, as rasters, and then there's also a an index file. Um, I think in the, as, as, well, as the one in ten thousand. Um, so so let's I'll show you where mine are. Um, so I'm going to turn on, if I navigate to the GIS raster elevation folder, I've got something called um, an index tile, or, an, or a tile index, and then the, inside the DTM is the actual, um, what are they, did I save them as TIFFs? Yeah, uh, the TIFF rasters, which are the elevation uh, models. So let's turn on the, the shape file for the index tile to see which ones we need to add. So I'll open that. And then we can see that we need these four grids that cover Bukemba. So it's not covered by one single grid, but rather a portion of each of these four grids. So let's turn those on. So now we just need to make sure we choose the, the raster. I'm just going to make this a little smaller. Where should I put it? I want to be able to see the, the actual grids. So what is that one? That is uh, 0430AA. Okay, so that's AA. So I can see these ones, and that's AA. 0430AA. So now I just need to navigate to that that same folder. GIS raster D no, it's elevation DTM. Okay, let's go find those files. Uh, should I just make this a TIFF? Okay, it's GeoTIFF. And 0329DD. 0329DD. Okay, we just need to make this come down a bit. 0329, 29DD, 0429DD, 04, so that's a bit further, 0429DD, and 030CC, 030CC, and it was, Zero four three zero. Was it zero four three zero? Must be zero four three zero AA. I think that's the one that's hiding behind my little box here. So if I click add and close those, and they've all added. <coughs> okay, so they've all added, and they've all got slightly different um, elevation profiles. Uh, and this one has got a, a whole lot of no data values here. Which uh, the no data value for these ones is is uh, was it four nines? So that's why these ones don't look the same. Uh, what we could do is if we went to one of these, you could copy across. So for instance, you could copy your style across, copy style, and then paste style. You know, just to make it look similar. And zero three, so we can also paste that style. And then we can. We can put these all on a group. Group selected, just call it DTM. And then maybe put the tiles on top of that. Okay, so we can see which ones are which. Actually, there's something else we can do. I'm just going to set out the uh, query the query builder using the commune for Bukemba. Slightly winner, it's gone too far. Bukemba, okay. And then uh, I'm going to make it a single symbol. I'll make it the boundary one. And it's going to be no brush. And I'll give it a bright. I'm not going to make it red. We've already got red. Green. No. Yellow. Orange. Um, let's go with this burnt orange here. Okay. Apply. Okay. And then just stick this on top. And what we could do actually is just rename this to Bukemba. Oops. Okay, so we want to create an elevation file specifically for Bukemba. Then we need to take four files, merge them, and then clip the new file out. Okay, so let's let's see how we can go about doing that. So we're going to use a tool which uh, which merges these rasters together. And if we look 
at miscellaneous tools. So under our raster options, we've got miscellaneous, and then there's one called merge. Close that down. And where is it here? Miscellaneous. Merge. What other ones are there? Contour, conversion, analysis. Okay. So merge is the one we're going to use. So let's go merge. And now we just need to select the input rasters. And there are four in the project. We select all of those. Okay. And then we can use the float option, float 32. Okay, because there's if you look at the points here, it's not a it's not a full integer. Um, it's got decimals, so it needs to be float. And let's run it and see what happens. Uh, it's going to create a temporary layer. Let's just run that and see what it looks like. If we close that one, turn that off, put the camber on top. It looks like it's done its job. You see, we've got it. Pu it's pulled through the values for. There's no data value of uh, zero. What is it? It's uh, minus nine nine nine, and that's just a ridiculous value. And sometimes it's put in just to uh, denote sort of a no data value. So those are all the dark ones, and then the lighter ones are in here. So what we can do then is just uh, change the the values for the symbolizing. So we single band pseudo color. And we'll just change this to hmm, what is it? One. Let's go one, 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 one thousand two hundred meters. Apply. Okay. And it looks like that. Okay, so that's kind of looks looks like what we we are hoping for. It's merged all four of these into one. But if we just want the uh, the raster for Bukemba or the elevation data for Bukemba, all we need to then do is just clip. So let's go have a look at these miscellaneous tools. There's a extraction one. Okay, so we can clip by a masked layer, or you can clip by extent. So if you clip by extent, then you can just drag a box and it'll clip out a box for you. But if you clip by a masked layer, which is what we're going to do, we're going to clip by a masked layer and use the Bukemba uh, commune. So we're going to say clip by masked layer, masked layer. It's the merged raster which you want to clip. You see, it's already defaulting to the right ones we want. But if if it isn't, you just need to make sure you choose the right raster that you want to clip, as well as the right mask layer. The no data value, we're just going to leave that at not set for now. Uh, create and dip it up. Output band, no, that's fine. And then this time, I want to create a permanent layer. So I'm just going to say save to file, and then go stick it somewhere in our project folders and a spatial, maybe create a new folder here and just call this raster. And it is the DTM for Bukemba, but I'll just call it DTM. Digital elevator, oops, DFTM. It's DTM. <sighs> DTM, I can't see past my microphone here, so that's why I keep hitting the wrong keys. And save and run. That shouldn't take too long. It's just clipping out based on that mask layer. Okay, so that, that did take a little while to run. I'm not sure how long it would take on your system. I kind of I just let it do its thing and walked out the room. But uh, I wasn't gone too long. I came back and it seems to have finished because we've got a little clipped mask layer here. And I can actually close this down. And if I turn off all my other layers. I'm wondering if it's doing, it does not look like it's doing what it should have. Zoom to layer. See, that seems way too big, so I'm not too sure what's happened here. If I just turn that back on. See, that's way too big, so some issue there. Now, I wonder if it's because the projection is different. It's possible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that projection down to be the same projection as this, let's see that one. What is this projection? UTM. So it's possible that is the issue here. So if it is, we'll sort it out now. So I'll just uh, zoom to this layer. And I'm going to say Bukemba, export, save feature as. And I want to save as the project. I'll just go put it in a temporary folder working. Let's call it Bukemba. Bukemba UTM 
35 south. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to crib this uh, style. Uh, let's copy the symbology style and just go paste it on here. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave that one on because that's got a different name, so that should be fine. And uh, this I'm going to trash because that did not work. So I'm going to remove that layer and I'm going to do that whole exercise again. And hopefully this time it'll work. So let's go, what was it? Extraction, pip raster by mask layer. And the mask layer, okay, that's fine. And the merged, it's the merged layer we want to clip. And it's not the Bakemba one because it's the wrong EP. Well, I assume it's the wrong CRS, wrong CRS. So I'm going to choose this one. And everything else is fine. And then the nice thing about this is if you delete the, uh, the file that was wrong from your project, you should be able to just go back in and write over the top of one that's already named. So if you rename it. Just right over the top of it and click run. And let's see, this will probably take quicker because now I'm at least uh, using the right masked layer with the right uh, coordinate reference system. <coughs> okay, so I suspected that was the issue, but it looks like it wasn't the issue because it's done the exact same thing. So what I'm going to try, I'm going to try a different algorithm. So let's see if there are another is if there is another algorithm here so I'm just gonna go clip oops 1p clip raster so now there was the it was the GDAL tool that was causing the problems uh, clip points clip points clip raster by mast now you see these two are the same why don't we try extent let's see if the extent option works so if we clip the raster by the extent the input layer will be merged clipping extent will be okay let's do this let's use the layer extent and select the uh, UTM zone 35 south book camera version and we're going to write over the top of that other file again so let's just go find it yes thank you. yes we're going to replace you and it's whole thumbs third time lucky okay it's used the extent of the layer. So if I close this and put the, uh, the, ex the layer on top. So what it's done here is it hasn't actually clipped to the layer. But it's clipped to the extent. So the maximum and minimum X, Y, Z values. That is what is it, ha it has clipped to. Okay, so I mean that's, that's how you can do that. How you can clip to a layer. I'm not entirely happy with my results here. I was hoping to be able to clip to the actual uh, the, the the polygon boundary, and there may be something something I'm doing wrong. So I'll I'll double check that, and if I have any if any solutions, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, what we can do is just work with this clipped layer for now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my 99 values. Actually, I'll just use what I'll do is I'll copy the merged the merged. Um, actually, no, I won't copy the merged option. I will just change the minimum value or the or the lowest value to to something smaller. So let's go um, properties. We're going to go symbology, single band pseudo color, and we'll just make this one two zero zero zero. Apply. Okay, and then turn off our other layers. And there we got the the terrain or the the elevation for that layer. And then what we can do is just go and run a hill shade. Uh, for that same area, which is here somewhere, hill shade. Okay, so we're using the clipped extent. We'll use the defaults for now. You can change those defaults if you want to. We'll use the defaults. I'm going to use a temporary file. You can create a permanent file as well. So let's run that. Close. And if you ran this hill shade. On a on a layer that was uh, not meters, it was decimal degrees, for instance. Then you would have a, a massive issue here with your topography. But uh, because it was in meters, uh, the hill shade looks correct. And then lastly, what you can do is you can just go to your properties and just change your hill shade transparency down to. You can go to 50% between 50 and 35 work. Uh, let's let's see what 40% looks like, and this will make the hill shade layer 
transparent so that we can see the 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 elevation as well as the as the as the sort of the hills and if i if i flick the hill shade on and off you kind of see the effect that that gives you so you can you can see that this this is this entire catchment here all this water is going to drain off this way into this stream so if there's any settlements in this valley you'll probably find that anything upstream of them is going to be pristine water there's nothing contaminating it so so any settlements down here if there are any we'll be able to get some pretty good spring water whereas everything draining off this way uh, has got a much larger catchment and more potential for water to be contaminated surface water i mean i don't know that's the kind of thing i think of i don't know if it's something that comes into into or features at all Anyway, that's how you would do the um, the elevation for um, an area, for a specific area. So if you have any uh, questions, uh, give us a shout. Otherwise, good luck with that. Cheers.